Hey guys, Jay Williams here. I just wanted to make a brief video on the interaction between the sear and the hammer on a 1911. Now other pistols may have that same exact interaction or there may be some similarities. I don't know. I've never worked on uh, triggers of other pistols, just the 1911. So what I'm going to tell you is what I know about 1911s. Um, if some of, you, some of you want to leave comments telling similarities or differences between 1911 and other pistols regarding the sear and hammer interaction, that'd be great. Um, I've got some little hand-drawn diagrams that I'm going to go through and just uh, talk about a few things and talk about a couple different kind of jigs that you can use and how those affect the interaction between the sear and the hammer on the 1911. Alright, these are my drawings. The gun is pointed this way. Um, here's the sear, the sear nose, the hammer hooks, and here's the hammer. Um, when you pull the trigger, it pushes this direction on the bottom of the sear. It pivots here, so that pushes the nose of the sear out this direction, out from underneath the hammer hooks, which are just these things right here. Well, there's there's two of them. You can, we're looking from the side, so it looks like just one, but you get the idea. This pivots right here, it pops out from under the hammer hooks, and the hammer falls this way. This is what's called a positive sear angle. What happens in this case, and it's exaggerated quite a bit, when you squeeze the trigger and the sear moves this direction, it, it moves on an arc, like my finger is showing here. So this part of the sear actually has to push this part of the hammer up, out of the way. It moves in this direction, pushes against this surface of the hammer. So when you squeeze the trigger, you can actually see the hammer move back a little bit because the nose of the sear is pushing up here, pushes the hammer back out of the way. That's bad. Makes a heavy trigger. So that's not ideal. I tried to make these drawings similar so they kind of overlap. In this case we have a negative sear angle. This is steep here instead of, it's, so it's sloped this way instead of much more uh, close to parallel with, with the hammer hooks. And you can see the hammer is exerting force in this direction because the the spring pushes up back here on the hammer, tries to force the hammer this way. So the tips of the hammer hooks are pushing this direction and they want to push the sear out of the way because of this steep angle right here. You can see if this were super steep, those hooks would be coming this way. It would really want to shove the sear out of the way. This is a negative sear angle. This is potentially dangerous because the, the sear can just pop out on its own, but you've got this half cock notch. So in theory, even if you did a dangerous uh, trigger job, the sear popped out, it'd catch on the half cock, and, uh, and the gun wouldn't fire. But obviously this is not good. This is neutral. Um, when the sear pivots, this angle roughly would follow the arc of the the arc that's circumscribed by the by the sear nose um, based on the radius here between the pivot point and the sear nose. This is good, but the shape of this nose can make a difference, and I'll I'll explain that shortly. All right. In this case, here's the primary sear angle. Here's the secondary. The idea between uh, around making the secondary angle is so that there's less of a surface here that needs to be moved out from underneath the hammer hooks. If you make this angle super steep though like this versus an angle more like this, it lets the sear come much further in this direction and then these hammer hooks can stick way out. Then you're back to uh, the idea of the sear having to shove the hammer out of the way because this is going to pivot like this and because it's well back from the the tips of the hammer hooks the sear has to shove the hammer out of the way slightly before 
popping out entirely from under the hammer hooks, allowing the hammer to fall. So if you have a really steep angle, you get this. And if the hammer hooks are just plain too long, and 25 thousandths for this distance would be a little bit longer than they're supposed to be, you can see that's also what happens. Now this angle is more appropriate for the secondary angle, but the hammer hooks can still be too long and stick out past the sear nose. And so even if you've done the secondary angle correctly, so instead of making the angle come way down here, which would exacerbate the problem, it's a shallower angle, so it doesn't allow the sear to still move real far in this direction. The hammer hooks can still be too long to begin with, and you still end up with that problem of the sear having to shove them out of the way as it pivots. Moving the hammer back um, makes for a heavy trigger pull. So, uh, I think uh, it's pretty well agreed on that these should be 18 to 22 thousandths. So 25 thousandths would be too long, and so that's why I've got this overhang here just to demonstrate that, even though this angle for the secondary uh, should be pretty good. This would be more appropriate. Um, got a good secondary angle, the hammer hooks are shorter, and so this here, you can see, does not have to fight against the, the hammer hooks to shove the hammer back out of the way as it moves. It just moves short a short distance along the surface then when it gets to the secondary angle it pops out. Um, now let me go back and find a better drawing. Alright, to make this next point I'm telling you that this is neutral let me let me zoom in here. But the truth is, if this is straight, and there's a there's a jig, uh, I don't remember what it's called, custom something jig. You can it's like 150 to 180 bucks. You get it from Brownells or whatever. The um, the sear is held on one end, there's a roller on the other end, so there's a, you can't see my waving my hands around out here outside the camera. Um, on one end of the jig, you hold your sear, on the other end of the jig is a roller, and the stone moves straight back and forth on the tip of the sear and on the roller, just like this. So it would make this line perfectly straight. The problem is that this nose follows an arc, follows a curve. So I say this is neutral, but the problem is, as this nose follows an arc, it actually changes from being positive or negative or neutral, tra changes between those. So it's not going to be positive or negative necessarily throughout this movement, or neutral. So the trick is, how do you make this angle so that, I guess what would be ideal is that uh, it would be neutral as it gets toward the end of its travel, but again, if it's, if it's negative toward the beginning, it's going to tend to make the sear move this direction from this downward force from the hammer hooks. So you get the point though, whether this is positive or negative or neutral actually changes as it moves through this arc. So having this flat is not ideal. Now this is ideal if the nose of the sear is actually shaped to follow the circumference or the arc that it circumscribes as it moves based on the radius between its pivot point and the nose. That means that this is going to be negative or uh, neutral throughout its entire movement. So even as this thing moves like this, the interaction between the nose and these tips of the hammer hooks is going to be neutral throughout this movement. It'll be neutral, 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 neutral until it pops out. That's ideal. And you don't need to worry about it being unsafe with a negative angle 
or having a bad trigger with a positive angle. Uh, it's neutral the entire time. The hammer doesn't want to fall and pop the sear out by itself. Um, the sear is not trying to shove up on the hammer hooks to get out from underneath them. Uh, so this is ideal. The question is, of course, is how do you achieve this? And this is my Ed Brown sear jig. And you can adjust that angle with this screw right here because the base of the sear bumps against that screw. So you can move that screw in and out to change the angle that you get by running a stone along here. Now, whether you put a feeler gauge here or here, or the thickness of the feeler gauge would also affect that angle, but uh, not nearly as much as moving the screw would. And whether you put the, the feeler gauge here or here, and you rest the, you rest the stone on it either way, and the, the feeler gauge keeps the stone from rubbing on this and lets it move easily. I like to have the feeler gauge this way, because I can easily hold onto it with my hand and move it along with the stone so that that feeler gauge slides on here real easily. If you have it this way, the stone's going to slide on the feeler gauge. If you hold it this way, the only things that are moving against each other are the feeler gauge on this surface, so it's never going to wear out pretty much. If you have the feeler gauge this way and move the stone on it, it's going to tend to make the feeler gauge move back and forth, or it's going to wear out the feeler gauge by the stone rubbing on it. So I, I like having it go this way. Otherwise, it's it's irrelevant which way it goes. Now, as you move the stone on here, and in fact, let me grab a stone real quick. Now, there's a certain angle between the stone and the sear right here. As I move this this direction, if I exaggerate it a little bit, or move it way down here, the angle is much steeper. See that? The angle is going to be much shallower here. As the stone moves down this direction, if I move it really close, that angle gets really steep. The effect that that has is to put a rounded surface on that sear nose. That's actually closer to ideal. It will not make a flat surface, although it'll be pretty close to flat for all practical purposes, but based on my little demonstration, it does show the geometry of it that it will round it over slightly. And as I showed you, that's, that's fine. Actually, that's closer to, to optimal. But it'll be so such a small curve that you'll never even see it. So that's this jig. Now, let me show you a new jig that I have. It's called a True Radius jig. And the idea is simply that it creates that perfectly radiused nose, like I showed in this drawing. It creates that exact curve that matches the line circumscribed by the radius that um, the radius that you have that's circumscribed between or the radius that you get between that line or the, that uh, pivot point and the sear nose that radius circumscribes a line that line exactly matches with the diameter of these guys here. So this jig will give you that curved nose on the tip of the sear so that you have a neutral angle throughout its swing, throughout its movement. That's ideal. Uh, this is again called a true radius sear jig. Uh, it's like 120 bucks and I'll do another video where I actually show how to use it and uh, we check out the results. But that is the gist of it. Um, honestly, if you just buy one of these, you shouldn't need to worry about um, too much of the technical stuff or making sure you've got the right angle on the sear nose, um, the negative versus positive uh, engagement between the sear and the hammer. Alright, on your hammer, 
you got your hammer hooks right here and here. And when I was talking about the 18 to 22 thousandths, you take a feeler gauge, and I don't have one with me right here. You just lay it right there, anywhere between 18 and 22 thousandths. Uh, 18 should give you a little bit lighter, shorter trigger pull. If you're a little more concerned about safety, you'd make those hooks longer or leave them longer. So let's just say you want to go with 20 thousandths. Put the feeler gauge on there, and you'd feel, you'd be able to run your finger over that and feel if the hooks are standing proud of that feeler gauge, whether it's 18 or 20 or 22 or 21 or 19, whatever. Then you can take a stone and stone across there to bring those hooks down to the level of your feeler gauge. So that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, so yeah, the shorter shorter those are, the little lighter and shorter your trigger pull is going to be, the longer they are. Um, you might want that. Uh, it, might, it might give you a margin of safety. Um, do a little bit more research on that, but uh, from what I've, from what I understand, 18 to 22 thousandths should be safe. Um, actually, what you might want to do, if you do your own trigger job, leave them stock and stone your sear nose, and then try the trigger and see what happens, and then maybe bring it down by a thousandth. If they're 20, 22, bring it down to 21. See how it works. Bring it down to 20 if you want. See how that works. Um, work your way down a thousandth at a time and see how it affects your trigger pull. Uh, maybe I'll even try that um, when I do this next trigger job on my second 1911 build. Anyway, so those are your basics for um, the intera interaction between the hammer and the sear on 1911. I hope that uh, helped you understand that a little bit better.